Hey, what's up you amazing hackers? Hope you're all doing well today. So today I want to talk to you guys about IDORs because I've promised you guys some crazy intense stuff. Let's talk about it. First of all, we really need to talk about authentication versus authorization because they're two different things. When I'm authenticating myself to a web application, for example, or a mobile application, whatever it may be, um, I'm actually telling the server, hey, this is me, this is the XSS rat. And I can do that by using, for example, email and password or username and password, uh, biometrics, data, PIN numbers. So there's a bunch of different ways that I can do all of this. Um, and if I'm authenticated to a server, I can be authorized to do something. But if I'm not authenticated, there might also be cases where I'm authorized to do something. And in this case, we're always not authorized to do it. It's as simple as that. Um, and it basically means that when I'm logged in, I'm going to grab an object, for example, my invoice. Uh, and when I am logged out, I can also try to grab that invoice. But in both cases, I will not have authorization to it. Pretty simple up to this point. Let's talk about the insecure direct object reference part a little bit, because I think it's important to notice you have your object reference in there, uh, your direct object reference in there, which is a object and a reference. Your object in this case is going to be your invoice. Your reference is going to be your identifier in here. So this is why you see all insecure direct object references need their identifiers in there somehow. It might be in many different forms because I've put it in plain text here, but of course it can also be encrypted. There can be some, some crazy stuff going on in here, like UIDs. So it really depends. Now, um, as for the, authoriza the authorization, I am never authorized to grab that specific invoice. But if I'm logged in, of course, I'm authorized to grab my own invoices. So there might be a little bit of a difference there. That's why it's always important to also test on authenticated IDORs if you're testing for IDORs. Um, so that being said, you have authenticated, unauthenticated IDORs, but of course there's also going to be your IDORs between your business to business customers. Now, what happens a lot of these days is that you have one server and companies will try to sell it to many different clients, their product, and they'll give each client a chunk of the server and they'll write the data to the same databases, etc. So all of these different clients, basically they come into maybe like, let's say a different uh, part of the server, uh, but sometimes there might still be IDORs between the different companies and especially if they are hosted on the same server. Now it doesn't have to be because it's also possible that they're not hosted on the same server. IDORs might still exist if the configuration is particularly bad. So that's something to realize there. Now, you, I put inter-tenancy here, but you don't have to have the same server. Now, inter-tenancy means that we have two attack scenarios, IDORs between your employees of the same company and IDORs between companies. So I could grab the invoices from people from within my company. I could grab invoices from people from within, from within other companies. And I'm talking about HR applications and invoicing applications, basically anything business to business here. Um, so in that case, all of those identifiers, they kind of, it kind of gets mixed up a lot, you know, like if you're grabbing the specific users, it might say user ID equals, and you might be thinking, oh, I am not even going to test this because of course I can see the users that are within my own company, but you might, might not be thinking about users that are within different companies. So as you can see, IDORs are pretty complex. This is just the first part of it, many more to come. Uh, and I'll put a small article about this up uh, as well. It's going to be in the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching Amazing Hackers. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, Amazing Hackers.